Hello and welcome to lesson 5 of my Swift tutorial for beginners video series. Now in the last two lessons you learned how to write code that can be executed based on some conditions. Now let me introduce you to something called loops. Loops allow you to repeat a block of code multiple times and while this might sound a little bit boring and repetitive, it's actually quite useful. Let me show you how they work. So now I'm going to demonstrate for you the for in loop and this is going to allow you to loop a block of code for a set number of times. Let's jump into the playground that I have prepared. Well, I haven't actually prepared anything because it's a blank playground, but let me present to you this dilemma. So if we were to print hello in the console and let's say I wanted to print this five times. Now I could just write five lines of code like this. You know, you get the picture but we can use a for in loop to condense this code into just a couple of lines. And let's take a look at the syntax for a for in loop. So true to its name, the keywords to use are for and in. You start with the keyword for followed by some sort of variable name. Now you don't have to use the var keyword here. You just give it a name and then you write in and then you specify a range. So there's a lower range followed by three dots and then an upper range. And I just want to mention that it's an inclusive range. So if your range is one to five, it's going to loop from one to five. And that would be a total of five times. And then you follow that by a set of braces. Inside the braces is where you put your code and that code is going to be looped for whatever range that you've specified. So I know that this is yet another set of keywords and another sort of syntactical structure that you have to remember. But remember what I said, don't try to memorize anything. As long as you do the exercises and worksheets after each of these lessons and you just spend 15 minutes even just trying it out and playing around with it, you will remember the keywords to use and the structure of a foreign loop. You don't have to memorize anything. So that is really the way to go. And don't forget, I do have a cheat sheet for you to download on the resources page uh, for this video series, which you can find the link to in the description below the video. So have that cheat sheet beside you. And if you ever forget, you just refer to it. All right, now let's jump back to our playground and let's take a look at doing this for in loop. So I'm going to uh, just create my loop right up here. So for, and then I'm going to use the variable name counter in, right? And then I specify a lower to upper range. And I'm going to do one dot 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 five, right? And then I'm going to put my braces. So inside these braces, we're going to put our print hello. So let me erase four of them, cut that one, and then let's paste it inside there and we're going to run our code. Boom. So now we have hello five times. How easy was that? Sure enough, it's run our code from one to five. Now, the question is, what is this counter for? What is this variable name for? Um, well, the thing is, for each iteration of the for in loop, the counter refers to that number. So in the first iteration of the loop, counter actually contains one. In the second iteration, counter contains two, and so on and so forth. So let's say I wanted to print out the counter. Maybe I wanted to print out numbers one to five. I could print counter, and then I can run that. And then you're going to see one, two, three, four, five output instead. Now one cool thing is that you see that there was this yellow warning here and that was Xcode just telling us that, hey, if you, if you don't need to use that variable, then you don't have to specify it. But since we started using it in this print statement, that warning's gone away. So let me tell you what that warning was all about. Why don't we go back to hello? And then that little warning is going to come back. And it's telling us that this counter was never used. Consider and this is kind of cut off. Let me see if I can show you. Consider replacing it with an underscore or removing it. So what, what happens is that if you actually don't need to use that sort of counter, 
you can replace it with an underscore like that. And that's gonna be fine. That's perfectly valid for in loop syntax. Now I wanna show you one more thing that might get you tripped up when you're working with loops. Why don't we add this counter variable back because we're going to need it. So let's say I want to display, or let's say I wanna add up all the numbers from one all the way up to five, and I want to get the sum of all of those numbers. You know, you might do something like this. You might say, you might declare var sum equals zero. And then remember that this counter contains these numbers for each iteration, right? So I might want to do something like this, plus equals counter. And I think this is the first time you've ever seen the plus equal operator right, like this. Um, this is just an increment operator. So what we're actually saying is basically add whatever counter is, add it to sum. So if sum is 10 and counter is five, well, sum is now gonna be equal to 15. So another way to think about it is that it's equivalent to writing sum equals sum plus counter. All right, it's kind of just like a shorthand. All right, so in every iteration, we're basically adding one and then adding two and then adding three and we're collecting it inside this variable sum. So what I wanna do now is just print sum and now let me run it. What would you expect to happen? Let's take a look. We get one, two, three, four, and five. Well, that's not what we expected, right? Why is that? Well, let's take a look. So in iteration number one, we declare a variable called sum, we've set it to zero, and then we're adding one to zero, and then we're printing that, and so we get one. Well, in iteration number two, counter is now two, and then we are declaring sum and setting it to zero. So we're essentially adding two to zero, which is two, and so it prints sum and we get two, and so on and so forth. So the problem is that in every iteration of the loop, we are declaring sum and we're setting it to zero. So we're not really getting that addition of the counter through the iterations like we want. And if you notice, you might say, why am I able to declare sum so many times, right? Because in the very first lesson, I told you that when you declare a variable up here like this and like str, you don't need to redeclare it in order to assign it something else, right? So I can assign Tom to str up here and that would be perfectly fine. However, if I try to declare str again, you know, like this, I'm gonna get an error. Invalid redeclaration of str, right? You can't do that. So why is it that I can do that here, right? In every single iteration, we're declaring a variable called sum and setting it to zero. Well, the reason is because every iteration, it's almost like a clean slate. There's no recollection of what happened in the previous iteration. So that's why that's happening. Essentially, we're resetting sum every single iteration. Uh, what we want to do instead to get the desired effect is that we should move this declaration out here and set it to zero. And then inside each iteration, we are essentially just adding the counter to sum. And we are going to get the desired effect if we do it this way. So outside here, I'm gonna print sum Let's stop it and run it again. And so we get 15 and that's the numbers from one to five all added up. Now, as you can see up here, we've declared sum, we've set it to zero. And then down here in the for loop, in the first iteration counter is one. So we're adding that to zero. And so sum now is one. And in the second iteration, we're not resetting sum, counter is two this time. And we are adding two to one, so we get three and then so on and so forth. And then the loop ends after five iterations and then we print sum. And so that's why we get the single number here. So I just wanted to go through that quick example to illustrate kind of how loops behave because I know a lot of beginners who get tripped up with something like that. All right, recap time. So use a for in loop to execute a block of code for a set number of times. And each time your code runs is called an iteration of the loop. 
Now be sure to practice with the worksheet for this lesson because loops are powerful stuff. In the next lesson, I'll show you some other kinds of loops. Just click on over there for the next lesson and I'll see you there.